Hello and welcome to the seventh video in our Pixhawk 2.1 series. So, so far we have taken the Pixhawk, we talked about it, talked about why it's a little bit different, then we have flashed it with Arduplane 3.8, popped it into the plane, we're using a V-tailed mini talon here, and then we've gone out and we've done our first test flight. Now, in the last video that we talked about some of the different flight modes that we needed for those first couple of flights to check everything was working. We talked about manual, we talked about stabilize, we talked about things like fly-by-wire A, fly-by-wire B, we talked about things like return to launch and auto-tune 2. Now there's an awful lot of flight modes on the Pixhawk and we have looked at some of them historically on some of the other series on the channel. So if you look at any of the other Pixhawk and APM series, you'll see me talking about each of the modes. But the way I'm going to do it in this video is we're going to talk about the modes as they are as I'm recording this. And I'm recording this at the beginning of September. I'd recommend whenever you are interested in looking at anything regarding Ardu Pilot, so the Ardu Copter, Ardu Plane, Ardu Rover, whatever it is, go and have a look at the documentation. The documentation is one of the best for our, any open source style project for the Ardu pilot series. So if you want to know everything, you can find it in here. So I'll put a link to the description to the ardupilot.org sites that we're going to be looking at. So you can go and have a look in the future and read up about what the latest and greatest is. But what I'm going to go through is each of the modes and explain a little bit about how they work, what they do and where you'd use them if you're brand new to this flight controller and you've never played with it before or if you've never watched on one of the other Pixhawk or APM series either. So let's start at the very beginning. We'll start with manual mode. Now manual mode is the very basic mode that you can use as a oh dear switch to get yourself out of trouble if you're trying one of the other modes and something is going wrong. I would always recommend having manual mode on the plane. You'll notice in Ardu plane flight mode 6 is locked to manual mode. And that is a very deliberate thing. It's historic from the way that the APMs used to work. So that might change in the future, but I always recommend having a manual mode switch there. That way, if you start to get into trouble or the stabilize starts to misbehave or one of the flyby wires or something that you're doing, you can pop it back into manual mode and then try and fly it back to yourself. But in manual mode, all of the RC controls are passed to the control surfaces as though the Pixhawk isn't there at all. There are a couple of exceptions, of course. Uh, if you've done mixing for your VTEL, which we have here, or your Elevon output, then the flight controller is actually doing those bits for you, but that's pretty much it. The only other time that things will happen will be if you're flying in manual mode and if you configured a failsafe or a geofence trigger. And what a geofence trigger is in the system, you can actually say how far away you're allowed to fly. And if you try and fly further than that distance, the plane will take control. But if you're inside that bubble, if you've defined it, then you can fly around just as though you had the mix for the V-tail on your radio and everything works exactly as it does in a more conventional plane without a flight controller. The next mode is stabilized mode. Now this has really been superseded. The way it works in the documentation is anything you see, you see where it says throttle min and throttle max settings, uh, anything like that, they're actually in the configuration settings that we looked at last time. You remember we went into the parameters and we were changing things for the servo outputs for the V-tail. Well, in there is all of these settings as well. So if you want to change the way that this particular flight mode behaves, it'll tell you exactly which of these settings you need to play with. Now, stabilize mode is a very simple stabilization. When you're flying around and moving the sticks, uh, you have control of the aircraft. When you let go of the sticks, then the plane will auto level. So it's kind of like flying a plane with a very high wing with a low center of gravity that kind of pulls itself level anyway. Now this is quite nice. It means that if you get stuck or you're not sure about your orientation, you can just let go of the sticks and the plane or the copter or whatever it is you're flying will sort itself out. There are now some better options and the first one of those is the one we'll look at next, which is fly-by-wire A. So fly-by-wire A and fly-by-wire B are kind of the two modes that you will fly in the majority of the time with a Pixhawk, probably. 
So the way it works is it the control is slightly different to a standard plane. In a normal plane control, if you move the aileron to the right, very far side of your control, then the plane will start to do a roll and it will continue to barrel roll until you put the stick back to the center. With fly-by-wire A, the way it works is that the position of the control is directly related to the position of the aircraft in space. And the maximum roll and pitch that you can affect with the elevator and the aileron control are actually set by those limb underscore roll underscore CD options, all that red stuff in the first paragraph. The nice thing with this is that it isn't possible to roll the plane past the roll limit that you specify. So if you're flying FPV and you get a little bit carried away with yourself, uh, you won't be able to accidentally get yourself into a situation where you're flying upside down. Now the thing with fly-by-wire A, it doesn't take account of anything like airspeed or throttle or any of that stuff, and it doesn't also manage its height. It's just about the roll and the pitch controls, and it's limiting how far they move, and also directly relating to the amount of pitch and roll to the position of the elevator and aileron control on your radio. The rudder is in manual control as well, so you are still doing everything with the rudder, and you're still doing everything with the throttle. So fly-by-wire B is a slightly more sophisticated version of fly-by-wire A. It does a couple of more things. It will try and hold the altitude as well. And as it mentions in here, again, we've got all these little red pieces of text showing you the things that you can change in the parameters if you want to alter the way that this flight mode uh, behaves. Personally, I would agree with this. I think the FBWB climb underscore rate that's just below the middle of the screen in the second paragraph, it talks about increasing that because the default is two meters per second. It's quite a slow change. If you have a decently powered model, that's going to feel quite sluggish. So you can increase that so that you can climb a little bit harder. I would say that fly-by-wire A and fly-by-wire B um, are handy most to have. I quite like fly-by-wire A to be honest. It uh, is more like the stabilize uh, mode that's in some other flight controllers like iNav. Then we have auto-tune mode. Uh, we've talked a little bit about auto-tune in the previous video. That is one where you can fly the plane, you do uh, 20 flicks or rolls, ideally more than 20. I'd recommend you do 25 or 30. You do flicks, uh, maximum deflection right, maximum deflection left, and then nose up and nose down. And every 10 seconds, what it's doing, it is saving the new parameters. It was not as good as a manual tune, but it will get you lots better than the default tuning that it will come with out of the box. Next mode is training mode, ideal for teaching students. Uh, it really gives the users complete control over the rudder and the throttle, very similar to fly-by-wire A, but again, clips the maximum roll and maximum minimum pitch to certain limits which uh, you can't exceed. So it's doing a little bit more in training mode about trying to maintain the speed of the plane so that you don't get into a situation where you get into stalls and then have those kind of problems to deal with. Acro mode, it's really for acrobatics, it's more for advanced users, but if you're a pilot that wants to be able to have all the safety of a Pixhawk, but you still want to be able to do acrobatics, then this is the mode that you want to be setting things into. You can set in the software the parameter of how quickly the model will roll and also pitch up as well. So those are settings. Uh, but this is one I think that unless you are uh, an acrobatic pilot and you just want the Pixhawk for recovery or uh, peace of mind, you're probably not going to use acro mode very much. Cruise mode is a little bit interesting. It's kind of a super version of fly-by-wire B. If you remember, fly-by-wire B was limiting the maximum deflection, both pitch and roll, and the elevator was also acting as kind of a, a height control rather than a standard elevator. But cruise mode is a little bit clever. So if you were flying FPV and you had the plane sighted to fly over the top of a steeple on a church and you put it into cruise mode, then not only would you get all the benefits of fly-by-wire B, but cruise mode would also try and make sure that it was tracking to that object in the distance, even if the wind and other things were affecting it and it was getting pushed around. 
Auto mode, this is the mode that you use if you want to fly missions. Now in Mission Planner, and we'll talk about this in a future video, you can create a mission of a number of points and the mission planning with Ardu plane and Ardu copter, well all of the Ardu family actually is fantastic. It's very mature. You can do very simple things like put different points on a map and you can specify the heights for each of those points and then to get the model to fly or drive that particular mission, you load the mission into memory and then once you're in the air, you flick auto mode and away you go. But there are some extra things as well that we'll talk about when we look at the missions planning stuff. You have things like points of interest where you can set a specific thing that you want to look at and then if you're running a quadcopter with a pixhawk then it will circle that point of interest at the predetermined radius and it will keep the nose of the craft looking at that point of interest so if you wanted to take a 360 degree view of a ruined castle then you can put your point of interest over the top of the ruined castle, set your distance, I don't know, 50, 60 meters or whatever it is that you need to do, and then set it to fly around and it will naturally work to prescribe a 50 or 60 foot meter radius around that particular item. So auto mode is what you need to select in order to run the mission that you've uploaded into the Pixhawk. And this is one of the really cool things that you can do with Pixhawk, which allows you to do aerial mapping, surveying, and all that kind of cool stuff too. Return to launch mode is the oh dear one. We've already talked a lot about this so far in the series. When you arm the Pixhawk, it uses that location as the home location. So that's why it's always really important that you have a GPS lock before you arm your Pixhawk. And in the event of a problem, or if you put it into return to launch mode, it will then head back to that GPS set of coordinates that it was at when it was armed, and if it's a plane, it'll circle above, unless you've set up some other bits and pieces. Or if it's a multi-rotor, it'll kind of get back to the position and then gently sink to the ground and turn itself off. Last couple of standard modes here then, we have loiter mode. Loiter mode will make the plane circle around at the point where you started the loiter mode command. So if you were over the top of a very large tree and you hit loiter mode using the switch on your transmitter, then using the waypoint loiter radius, that WP underscore loiter underscore rad parameter, it will then just fly a circle around that particular point where you entered the mode. Now in a multi-rotor, of course, it just sits at that particular point. It just kind of sits in the air. With a plane, it always has to be moving. So what it does is it just flies in a circle around the point in the air where you flick the loiter mode on. Circle mode is similar to loiter, but it doesn't try and maintain position. So it will still fly around in a circle but it will not try and maintain its position. So if the model is getting pushed by the wind down the field, it'll fly in a circle, but it will gently get pushed by the wind and get further and further down the field. If it's in loiter mode, it will work very hard to make sure that it's always going around that loiter position in the sky. Okay, last of the standard modes here, we've got guided mode. Guided mode is one where if you're using a ground station with mission planner and you have telemetry radios connected, so you're talking to the craft all the time, you can literally just click on a map position and it will fly to that position. Very good if you're doing aerial video or photography, you can kind of uh, tell it exactly where you want it to go to by clicking onto the position in mission planner and it will fly to that position and then you can use your FPV equipment to take the video or whatever you're doing. Last couple of modes are a bit specialised. These are really modes that you tend to use as part of a mission script. So again, we talked about having individual plot points as part of mission planning. You can make it so that auto takeoff is the first one of those, so the vehicle will actually take to the sky. Taking off is a little bit more interesting with wheeled aircraft than it is with a multi-rotor, and I'm hoping we'll be able to get that feature in the series and talk a little bit about it. Because both takeoff mode and the next one, which is land mode with a fixed wing model, require a little bit of work and also really need some other technology on the vehicle as well, things that will measure altitude very well. So you kind of radar or your sonar or your LIDAR type of sensors to figure out exactly how high the craft is above the landing strip. 
So those are the flight modes. So the ones that we have played with so far, things like manual, fly by wire A and return to launch we've covered. But as you can see, there's an awful lot more to choose from as well. Realistically, in normal operation, you're only gonna use two or three. I tend to find that I fly in fly by wire A the majority of the time. And occasionally I'll stick it into things like circle um, or loiter if I want to do something and then have return to launch to fly it back to me. So join me in the next video in the series where we'll continue our look at some of the more advanced features of the Pixhawk 2.1. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.